I wanted to be a ballerina. I actually took ballet for a few years at the Vermont Conservatory. It's hard for me to see the future, I guess, really. It's hard for me to see even like a year from now, you know? So I could be dead. I went through like a month without with, like saying like, why am I doing this? You know, I won't shoot up again, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> I did start shooting up again. I slept with people that I normally wouldn't probably have slept with. I've done things with people that like I probably wouldn't have because I knew that if I did it with them, like either they would have drugs or they would get them for me. It just got to the point where nothing got me high anymore. I was looking for the next high and it just, just nothing seemed to work. I was trying to get money for my mom and uh, she was sleeping. I went in her purse, she woke up and uh, we got in a big argument. There was a butcher knife in my kitchen and I took the butcher knife out and uh, I just came after my mom. Drugs ruined my life. They lowered my standards and values as a woman. I was always curious, you know, because all my friends were trying it at this point. Once I reached high school, um, I wanted to hang out with the in crowd. Well, before that, I started using drugs. I used to go horseback riding all the time. I rode in a lot of shows and won awards for it. It's kind of strange. It hooks you uh, pretty quick. And I can remember hitting rock bottom when I woke up one morning in a cold sweat. I became a thief. And there was an imprint in my bed, and I woke up shaking. I became a liar, manipulator, a sneak. And I was throwing up constantly, and I was dope sick. <laughs> At the age of 11, I started drinking alcohol, smoking marijuana, and I'm in for murder. My drug of choice right now is LSD. I'm committed to the youth authority on one count of escape and one count of uh, illegally selling automatic weapons. I started using marijuana at the age of 12, and I'm here for burglary. I thought I was going to be a big football player, a big football star. I know I never, jail never came to my mind. To not have heroin, it's like you almost do anything to, to get it. I killed the person. And I didn't, and I didn't even know what happened. If I would have never done drugs, I would have never committed the crimes I did, I'd be free. My grandma's a really sweet lady. She's 86 years old, and she, she doesn't deserve to have her granddaughter rob her to get high. I haven't talked to her since. Could I ask why am I in handcuffs? I've always wanted to be famous. I was like six foot, 185 pounds. I was muscular, I was everything. I could have done anything I wanted with my life. If I had the whole world in my hands. Heroin brought me down to my knees. They arrested me, so I had to swallow two bags of heroin. And now I'm trying to peek it up so I can get high. Heroin, it's, it's a good high, I'll give you that. It's put me on the streets. I've got no money right now. These clothes I've been wearing for weeks. My feet are dirty. I can't sleep with shoes on at night because where I sleep, the junkies and the winos will steal your shoes. I lose girlfriends. I have no family contact right now. They won't talk to me because I'm a heroin addict. I've lost a lot because of it. I've lost friends. I've lost family. It's almost like selling your soul, I guess, in a way. The holidays are really depressing because when everyone else is with their family, you just look around, everyone's walked around with smiles, and on Thanksgiving night, you're in a uh, Salvation Army, you're in a homeless shelter getting a little piece of chicken. Is it worth it? Sometimes I think it's worth it, and sometimes I think it's definitely not worth it. But I do it anyway. I wanted to be a ballerina. He considers himself the last of the cowboys, above the law and untouchable. But police have a different description for him, cold-blooded killer. Police say Martin Manuel Cardenas Meza has murdered, raped, and slithered his way through the western United States and Mexico. All the way comparing himself to shoot 'em up movie stars like John Wayne and Clint Eastwood. But this is no Hollywood hero. And FBI agent Scott Gariola is determined not to let this maniac, suspected of 14 murders, ride off into the sunset. Mesa needs to be caught. He's an extremely dangerous person. He's a terror. He's a menace in the United States as well as Mexico. He's got no regard for human life, and he has to be stopped. 
Mesa grew up in a Los Angeles gang and went by the street name Vida Loca. It's a slogan Mesa wears proudly across his tattooed stomach. That means crazy life. And Mesa wasted no time in living up to the reputation. On May 10th of 1987, at the age of 23, authorities say he committed his first murder here in the Compton section of Los Angeles. The guy just started firing at point blank range, just boom, boom, boom. The motive, road rage. I'm just sitting here and I, all I have to do is everything just slowed down for a second, like paused in time. A.J. Black remembers taking his best friend Ed Hebert home from a basketball game in his new car. Black claims that after a minor traffic accident, Mesa pulled up next to the passenger side window and started blasting shots into Black's car. I could smell the gunpowder in the air and I just felt blood covering solid and just oozing warm and I look over and my buddy Edward is 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 just slumped down in the seat and I go Ed 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 Hebert's mother Maria was waiting for her son to come home that day instead she got a visit from the police you don't want to believe it I think constantly you're shaking your head and you're thinking not my child not my child they're talking about something and someone else but it's not my child but finally, really, reality set us in and you have to accept it. While Maria Hebert mourned the loss of her son, Mesa went on the run, but he didn't hide. Detectives say he headed east to Tucson, Arizona, where his rampage continued with the grisly execution-style murder of two men. The abandoned bodies of the second and third murder victims were still lying on this deserted Tucson highway when police officer Mark Mardoka spotted Mesa's getaway car and gave chase. Within seconds, the patrolman was in the fiercest gun battle of his life. The driver leaned out the window and started shooting at my vehicle and me, and then the uh, passenger started shooting at, uh, out, out, leaned out their window and started shooting at me. It was pretty scary. Uh, they uh, got tired of leaning out the window, and they just shot the back window of their vehicle out so they could shoot at me and my vehicle. Finally, Mesa's bullet-riddled car could go no further. The man they call Vita Loca leapt out and fled on foot, climbing over this fence and running to freedom once again. Within weeks, La Vida Loca would surface again, this time in Mazatlan, Mexico, where he allegedly murdered three Mexican police agents during a traffic stop. Those who know him best say they're not surprised. He is totally, has a lack of regard for life in general. Um, at the drop of a hat, he will pull a gun on you and put it in your face, and you're lucky if you don't get killed. Once a confidant of Mesa's, this man now fears for his life, even from behind bars. He is a, the consummate killer. I mean, a, the embodiment of a cold-blooded, ruthless maniac. And as long as he's out there people are in danger. Mexican police finally captured Mesa in 1990 after another gruesome gun battle, but they couldn't keep him behind bars. La Vida Loca escaped from a Mexican prison in March of 1999 and is now thought to be drifting between California, Arizona, and Mexico. James's trail until he gets his man. And that day can't come soon enough for the mother of Mesa's first victim. She's waited 12 long years to deliver one final message to her slain son. I want this to be finally over. I want to have some closure in our family's life on it. I want to go to my son's grave and say it's finally over, honey. They're the hottest hunks in Hollywood. And who would have thought that this Canadian catch would have the number one movie in America? or that this muscle-bound blonde from Missouri would be named the sexiest man alive. Karen Hardy did, and she's got pictures to prove it. Oh, that's nice, that's beautiful, stay right there. She's one of Hollywood's star makers with a knack for finding the next box office sensation. What I recognized in their eyes was just kind of like um, an intensity and it kind of like, it, it's going to happen. She's got her eye on young Hollywood, and at the same time, they have their eye on her. They hope that some of her magic rubs off on them. You're so great because you can tell you're a true actress because you're willing to do anything. Hardy hooked up with Brad Pitt at a Hollywood party, and she knew right away he had star quality. 
there was absolutely no doubt in his mind, you know, that, that it was going to happen for him. The one thing about Brad is he was always worried about people judging him for his looks. While Brad Pitt stole Hardy's heart, it was Keanu Reeves who stole her soul. Keanu, I love Keanu. Keanu is like a free spirit. He was a total slob. He was just very interesting and strange and wonderful and I thought incredibly beautiful too. Karen was at a backyard barbecue when an unknown David Duchovny came into focus. He was incredibly bright, incredibly intelligent. And you know, it was so stimulating to meet uh, you know, someone that, that bright and spiritual at the same time. But it's not just the guys that Hardy's helped along the road to Hollywood. Long before Speed or Forces of Nature, actress Sandra Bullock blinked for Karen's camera as well. That's nice. And Karen believes it will happen for this unknown actress, Foreman Ellers. Loved working with you, and I want to wish you so much luck. I really oh, support you. you. With so, a track record yeah, like yeah, Karen yeah. Hardy's, this red-hot ruby might be the next to hold Hollywood's throne. Okay, let's, let's get something with the Hollywood sign in the background. I'm going to own that sign one day.